A deadline is set for this week in the case of a man who allegedly stabbed four Idaho college students to death last year. On December 1st, this Friday that is, the prosecution must turn over any DNA evidence they're using to convict Brian Koberger. Koberger is accused of murdering Kaylee Gonzalez, Madison Mogan, Zana Kronodal, and Ethan Chapin in their home where they were sleeping. More than a month later, investigators arrested Koberger at his parents' home in Pennsylvania. He was extradited to Idaho and now faces four charges of first-degree murder. For more on this case and upcoming trial, I'm now joined by trial attorney and legal expert Misty Maris. Thank you for being here. Thank you very much for having me. Well, the DNA is connected to the genetic genealogy investigators used to identify Koberger as a suspect. What do you think Koberger's defense team wants to do with this information, and what are they going to try to argue? So this is absolutely critical for the defense to get every single document, piece of information relating to this investigative genetic genealogy. Why? Well, this is the process that was used initially to identify Brian Koberger as a suspect. So, of course, all of that information is going to go into the uh, de ultimate defense strategy, and they're going to be looking for ways to potentially get some of that evidence out of the courtroom when the case goes to trial. Keep in mind, this discovery dispute dates back to May. This is a very, very, it's, it's kind of a, a new way of identifying suspects in the course of investigations. The way this is done is DNA is taken from a crime scene and a family tree is built. And that family tree can identify certain individuals in this case, Ultimately, they got to Brian Koberger. Now, the prosecution is saying that there's several reasons why this does not need to be turned over to the defense. So this this uh, December 1st, the judge is going to review everything and make a determination about what is required to go to the defense for the defense to uh, move forward with trying this case. Well, I was reading that there's privacy concerns handing over genetic genealogy like this. Why is that, do you think? Absolutely privacy concerns, and that's a central part of the prosecution's argument against turning over uh, some of this evidence. Number one part of the argument, it's not relevant. Prosecutors say they're not even going to introduce the genetic genealogy and the investigative process into trial because once Koberger was arrested, they do what's called a buckle swab. That's a cheek swab. That's what's going to identify him and uh, link him to the DNA on that night sheets. So relevancy is one part of the argument. The second part of the argument are privacy concerns. As we just discussed, the way that this investigative genetic genealogy process is done is to get that DNA, build a family tree. Well, who else is on that family tree? That's going to identify a whole slew of other individuals who could be a part of Koberger's uh, immediate and extended family. So that's certainly part of the concern and, and likely would be deemed irrelevant. However, until the judge sees everything, and the judge was very clear about this, I want to see it all, and I want to see it all at one time so I can analyze and determine what could ultimately be part of the trial. So the privacy concerns and the relevancy argument, those are the central issues that the judge will ultimately determine. So many questions. Curious to see what will happen. Misty Maris, thank you. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.